Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you something interesting that I've been working on. Um, this is a new shrink wrapper tool. So I often find myself in the situation where I want to work on CFD software and technology or I want to just get the exterior shell of complex models such as those from Revit or from other sources and then you know you end up spending quite a lot of time cleaning up models, removing entities, just so that you can build that exterior mesh. And, you know, I've always wanted a tool that can do that a little bit smarter um, than, than have to, having to manually do it. And I've been trying the shrink wrap tool from 3ds Max and Blender and um, also from Mesh Lab. And I had mixed results, you know, uh, it wasn't very good. Um, it didn't actually produce the geometry that I expected to see, so it wasn't even close. I understand shrink wrap um, is not as simple as it appears to be or might appear to be. It's actually quite a complex algorithm, having to retriangulate surfaces and all of that. But this is not a complex model I've got here, just because it does take some time to compute. But I'll show you other more complex advan uh, examples afterwards. But you can see there's some interior members in this model. Um, and there's a little bit of stuff going on. It's it's not super complex, but um, Let's see how we can process this. So there's two um, Chains of thought here. The one is generating a point cloud or a, you know, it's a point cloud methodology and the other one is direct um, Wrapping around the triangulated element. So I'll show you this one first because it's the easier one to run And I'll show you what the results look like and then we'll look at the other example. So I'll just set up some parameters here for my relative alpha and relative offset. It's going to run through and we'll see what happens very shortly. So as this is running, um, it'll take a couple of seconds, takes about 30 seconds or so. So I'll just let that run and let you know as soon as that is done. Okay, so we can see stuff is happening here. It's finished the shrink wrapping and it's starting to import the mesh. So what I do here is I overlay um, the red shrink wrap over the blue, which is the imported model. And we can switch this off actually and just see the shrink wrap model. And you'll see that looks pretty decent. Of course, you want to fine tune these values here with the R alpha and the offset. And obviously, help the finer the mesh is in the imported file, the better um, the results would be it's a bit of back and forth process but if you've played around with shrink wrapping before i think you'll agree this is not bad look at these surfaces here on the sides they're pretty straight we don't have exact straight feature line edges but if we look at the overall quality of the shrink wrapping methodology then it's not bad at all in fact we can export this so if i just export this to um let's send it to dwg and we'll just save over this model here and then we'll head over to AutoCAD and we'll just open it up so if we look at the model um, give it a second to open there we go there it is nice profile of course here on these corners here we get a bit of um, losing the actual feature based on the triangulation that's occurring there but again a pretty good result just off of the first test um, with those variables that I've used so that is pretty good um, if we head back and look at the other options that you can use here so sometimes you might have a bit more of a complex model now just restart the application in fact give me a second Right, so I've just restarted that quickly, so we've got a nice fresh environment. I did implement a new button, but this is still in development, so not everything is working as they should yet. Um, it's kind of just a preview on what I'm trying to achieve. So let's import something else. I've got this table model, but in fact, I want the object file because it's, a, it's unprocessed. So I just exported this one from Revit. Now, of course, you don't want to be doing tables and small buildings. You want to be doing large, complex buildings. And I'll show that to you in a bit. But if we wanted to take the point cloud route, if we, if we use the triangulation method here out of experience, it doesn't work well. And these circular um, table legs, you know, doesn't get picked up unless I, you know, tweak around the 
um, our alpha and our offset uh, properties there. But if we took a different approach, we said, let's do the point cloud method. Now, what this does is we create this sphere that you can see is subdivided by these horizontal and vertical lines, these divisions, and everywhere where they intersect, it's going to create a point. And then we're going to create this grid. And I'll just do a spacing here of 200 by 200 by 200. And that grid is placed within the bounding box of the model, right? The model extends. And what this is going to do is going to send, it's going to create a line or array from every point that is generated by these intersections in the sphere um, through the points that you see in the bounding box. And it's going to do a hit test to see if it hits something. And if it does, it's going to create a point there. So this is our kind of a, our virtual point cloud tool. And we can improve the quality of this a bit so we can set that up to maybe 30. Um, remember these uh, computations will go up exponentially when we change these and let's see if we make this a hundred and a hundred and a hundred that's gonna give us a better grid that's a pretty good grid I think we're gonna pick up everything we want to pick up from here so I'm gonna let this run it's gonna take a bit of time um, but let's do that so I'm gonna click on generate points and it's gonna start generating the point clouds and this will take maybe three or four minutes potentially and it's going to generate several thousands of points. So, I mean, the scale is irrelevant. It's the number of points that we generate, really. Ah, oh, it's actually not that bad. It created 218,000 points, and it did that fairly quickly. And you'll see all those green dots that is placed here on the blue model are the points. So it's got a whole lot of them. So it's quite dense, which means we should have a fairly decent quality wrapper coming out of this. So. The idea is now, now that we've created all these points on the surface um, of this object, we can again go and set our, our alpha values. Um, I, I'm using Seagal here as the engine to run this. So I've just compiled Seagal on my computer recently and started playing with it. So I'm quite unfamiliar with the alpha and offset values. I've kind of an idea what they do, but let's just adjust this to uh, let's say 80 there and let's make this um, 600 and then we've got a grid snap set in here so what this attempts to do is to take all of these points and snap them to a grid so that they are not too random so that's an x y and z so i'm going to make this value quite low actually i'm going to make this one for this exercise because we're working on a pretty small scale here okay so now it's running um the engine to do the point wrapping the previous one we did the uh, mesh wrapping. I can see it's got 218,000 points there and this is going to run for a bit. So what I'll do as well that's busy, I'm just going to pause and then we'll resume as soon as that's finished. See you soon. Okay, so we can see that finished and it took all of about two minutes. So again, you want to play around with the settings and things, get it as close as possible. But yeah, that doesn't look too bad for what it is. And again, if we just export this, we'll save it as a DWG. We'll just call it Fable 1. And if we head over to AutoCAD and open that up, uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so there we go. You can see that's not too bad that is pretty spot on I mean of course it's not hundred percent perfect it won't be no shrink wrap is but for a shrink wrap exercise I think you'd agree that this looks pretty damn good so the first time I ran the table actually it took way too long so because I wanted to finish this video tonight I reduced it a bit and you can see that I ended up with 46,000 points instead of the 218,000 that I had originally so I just I increased the sphere divisions but I decreased the grid spacing from 100 to 250 I set my alpha relative alpha value to 60 and the offset to 500 and my grid snap I kept at 1 and that produces a pretty decent result I think you would agree so yeah of course the next step is if we go back here and go to a new model and we import something a bit more complex like for example this one um, 
So this is the Revit sample model building. I've actually already removed the roof and stuff for a previous exercise to try and get it into a gaming engine. And I needed to simplify the geometry a bit. So I thought this is a good one because um, it actually, ah, you can't see it because I've got the, the bounding box on, but okay, let me show you. So if we do the same exercise here, we set that alpha to, let's say, I, I don't know, um, let's go for 60 and let's set this to 700. Let's go and wrap the triangles. So this, while that's busy, um, you can see this is the model. So this one is more complex. It's not just an exterior, but there's a lot of interior stuff also. So we've actually got these interior um, areas in the model. So it'll be interesting to see what the shrink wrap does with that and what, how good a job it does with that. Usually this is not what you would use it for. You would want it for the exteriors of buildings or in my particular case I required it recently for a bridge. I want to do a CFD analysis on a bridge model from Revit that is quite complex and um, it's a huge model. It's 1.6 gigabytes so if I wanted to just get the exterior um, because the bridge is built up so many different components I'd have to pretty much remodel everything um, to dumb it down a bit and to get to that watertight exterior model, which, you know, is just going to take too much time. And that's why I started working on this tool. So anyway, we'll pause this for a minute again and see, ah, oh, no, never mind. There we go. It's actually done and it's importing the mesh. Um, okay. And we can see, obviously, we need to refine that quite a bit, especially around these areas. Um, if we look here at the back, overall it's not terrible, but it's obviously the resolution is not fine enough. So if we switch that off and we just look at the shrink wrap, that's what we end up with. So yeah, still need some tinkering, still need some fine tuning, but um, definitely would be interesting to get this working and producing a lot more uh, high, higher quality results. And I guess the next step would be to kind of automatically calculate the parameters that we want for the relative alpha and the relative offset to give us the best kind of output. Um, I'm busy working on a G mesh integration so we can improve the meshing here. So obviously when we switch on the model, we got a wireframe. Um, in this model, you can see the blue one, there aren't a lot of triangulated edges. So the resulting um, wrap is not so, of such a good quality. If that was a denser mesh, it would be better. So the idea is to enable the meshing facility directly in here using Gmesh um, and the Gmesh libraries and to improve that and then create the wrap around it. Alternatively, in this particular model, the point cloud method would have worked quite well as well. So if we did go that route and we open up the same model, we got point cloud. I'll just reduce the number of sphere divisions here to speed it up a bit and we'll increase this number here quite a bit. So let's make that 3000 and see what we end up with. It's quite a lot of target points because you have to multiply that by the number of uh, points here on our grid, but let's just see what happens. <coughs> so this will run for a bit. Um, and while it does that, I'll just pause and show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, so that's finished. Um, oops, somehow I've jumped out of the screen. So that's finished and you can see it's quite a lot of points, created 364,000 of them. Um, took about three minutes. So now we've got a very dense point cloud here and the blue areas kind of show you where it missed. Um, so we've got more dense areas obviously in the green zones. <clears throat> and then as we zoom in we can see that you know obviously we see the original surface, the blue surface of the imported model. So if we did end up missing some areas we would then typically increase the number of divisions um, on the sphere. But this overall is not too bad, actually. It should produce a good result. It'll take a bit of time to process this. I'd say at least half an hour. Um, but it's okay because it's still faster than modeling those exterior shells. And you know, if you're using this for CFD applications and the quality is good and we actually maintain the features and things like that in the model, then that's pretty good. I'm trying to work on feature detection. It's not um, perfect yet. You can actually see it says here it's identified zero feature points. Um, the idea is that we find straight and orthogonal lines and where different 
uh, faces of our 3D uh, model intersect and we create a feature line there and then we make sure that we drop points on those feature lines um, and then we'll recompute the triangulation based off of that. Okay, well that's it for now. Um, I will probably make this tool available quite soon and so far I'm thinking of just making it free because um, it's not something you need every day but when you need it it's quite handy. Thanks for watching, stay in touch, cheers, bye.